In this video, I'm going to walk through one example of a single sample mean z-test using this scenario. In the population, SAT math scores are normally distributed with a mean of 500 and standard deviation of 100. College counselors want to know if juniors in their large district tend to have SAT math scores that are different from the known national mean. They randomly select 40 juniors in their district and give them the SAT. Their sample's SAT math scores had a mean of 510 and standard deviation of 95. I'm going to use the six-step hypothesis testing procedure to determine if there is evidence that this sample did not come from the population with a mean of 500 and standard deviation of 100. Step one, identify the population's comparison distribution, and assumptions. Let's start with the populations. In this example, we're comparing juniors from this district to the norms from all test takers. Those are our two populations. Next, we'll define the comparison distribution. Because we are comparing a sample, as opposed to an individual, to a known population parameter, our comparison distribution is a distribution of sample means. In this particular case, we're comparing the mean of one sample to the mean of a population with a known mean and standard deviation, so we'll be using a single sample mean z-test. Our comparison distribution will be the z-distribution. Next, we'll look at the assumptions for a single sample mean z-test. From your textbook, there are three assumptions of a single sample mean z-test. First, data are on a scale measure. In other words, the dependent variable is an interval or ratio level variable. Here, SAT math scores are normed, so I would treat them as interval level data. Second, participants are randomly selected. In this scenario, we are told that they randomly selected 40 juniors, so this assumption has been met. And third, the comparison distribution is normal. In this case, because the population is normal, we know that the sampling distribution will also be normal. And I'm gonna add a fourth one here, specifically for using the Z distribution, and that is the population standard deviation is known. That brings us to step two state the null and research hypotheses. We want to know if the mean score at this district is different from 500. That's our research hypothesis. It's a research hypothesis because it's stating that there is some difference. Note that this is written in terms of population values. The symbol for a population mean is the Greek letter mu. That makes this our null hypothesis. Recall, the null hypothesis always contains an equality, and it's also always written in population parameters. Step three, determine the characteristics of the comparison distribution. This is where we compute the mean and standard deviation of the comparison distribution. Because the population was normally distributed with a mean of 500, our sampling distribution will be normally distributed and it'll also have a mean of 500. You'll see the mean of a sampling distribution written like this. This is symbolizing that it's the mean of the distribution of sample means. This is our formula for the standard deviation of the distribution of sample means, also known as the standard error. With the z-test, we know the population standard deviation so that is the value we use in this formula. We plug in our population standard deviation and sample size, and we have a standard error of 15.811. We'll need these values later when we go to compute the test statistic. Step four, determine the critical values. We're conducting a Z test, so our critical values will come from a Z distribution. In addition to knowing the type of distribution, we also need to know the alpha level and the direction of the test. 
We're not given a specific alpha level in this question, so we'll assume 0.05 or a 5% alpha level. To determine the direction, we'll look at our hypotheses. Because the research hypothesis contains not equal to, that tells us that this will be a two-tailed test. The 0.05 alpha level will be evenly split between the left and the right tails, with 0.025 in the left tail and 0.025 in the right tail. That leaves 0.95 in the middle. We need to find the z-values that separate the middle 95% from the outer 5%. You have two options here. You could use the z-table in the back of your textbook, or you can use StatKey. I'll walk through each really quickly. Let's start by pulling up the z-table and finding the row where there is 2.5% in the tail. When the percent in the tail is 2.5%, the z-value is 1.96. This is our cutoff. Recall this is a two-tailed test, so the two cutoffs are actually plus and minus 1.96. Now I'll take you to StatKey so you can see how you could also find this value there. From the StatKey homepage, I want to construct a theoretical normal distribution. The default is a z-distribution. That's a normal distribution with a mean of zero and standard deviation of one. Select two-tail because we said that this was a two-tailed test. The default is actually a distribution with 95% in the middle and 5% split equally between the two tails. This is the most common alpha level, which is why it's the default in StatKey. The z-values that separate the middle 95% from the outer 5% are negative 1.960 and positive 1.960. These are critical values. I'll often write this as z with a subscript cv for critical value. If our test statistic in the next step is less than 1.96, or greater than positive 1.96, we will reject the null hypothesis. Step five, calculate the test statistic. Here's our formula for a z-test statistic. Looking above, our sample mean was 510. From step three, the mean of the sampling distribution was 500. The standard error was 15.811. We plug these values into our equation, and we have a z-test statistic of 0.632. Step six, make a decision. Here, we take our z-test statistic of 0.632, and we map it onto our z-distribution with the critical values that we found in step four. Because our z-test statistic is not beyond the critical values, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. There is not evidence that juniors in this district have a mean SAT score greater than the known national average of 500.